WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. All of our WNST, Baltimore Positive conversations brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery. We are putting the Crab Cake Tour together. I'm working on some dates and some Ukraine things and some surprises uh, into April, but we have a few things set. We're going to be Green Mount Station uh, up in Hampstead. And also with my dear friend Andy Ferranto set the uh, GNA Coney Island Hot Dog Moving from Highland Town now out to White Marsh, you know it. You see the line out the door. Apparently, they're going to make room for me under the uh, from Baltimore with love sign to be able to do some stuff. Uh, I got some Baltimore with love stuff here. Um, you know, a pharmacy story came to my desk. And, you know, this is the time of year where everybody's trying to figure out what's happening down in Annapolis. And uh, that's why Don and I oftentimes go down and try to learn things. And um, this one came to my desk. And, and first, let me just say, uh, you know, when it comes to pharmacies and drugs, uh, you know, my mom, died at 98 years of age a couple of years ago. I mean, pharmacies were a huge part of her life. She's there, uh, her finances, certainly my wife and her insurance. My wife's diabetic. There's no secret in that. And my wife's battle. So uh, anytime I start talking about pharmacies and uh, people and what it means for real people, I like to get to the bottom of any story. I don't know a lot about this issue, but Breda Gretzniner is here. Uh, she's the vice president of Epic Pharmacies. Breda, let me, and Scott Pace is also here. He's down in Arkansas. Um, and is, uh, and I'm, I'll go through who Scott is, a resident expert on pharmacy services, PSAO, uh, Pharmacy Services Administration Organization. So when these people start going with so abbreviations, I'm going to make sure I get everything together. Brett, first off, welcome in. Uh, I am you. familiar with Epic Pharmacies because I think anybody, um, uh, I'm friends with my friends at Northern Pharmacy. And um, so when I see places that have Epic on it or have over the course of my lifetime, I think, oh, this is sort of old school where like the pharmacist sort of maybe owns the place and is there. It's not like one of the chain places, nothing wrong with them. We buy from them, but certainly what you do here is a little different at Epic, right? It, it absolutely is. And thank you for that in introduction. Um, yes, a PSAO, uh, we live in the world of acronyms now, is an administrative intermediary that provides central contracting and different operational services for independent pharmacies like Scott's Pharmacy down in Arkansas. Um, we sit behind the scenes and generally are unknown to the broader public. The pharmacies operate under their own specific names. And so Epic is actually the organization that does a lot of and takes on a lot of those administrative burdens for them. We are created to gen basically the whole mission is to help small community pharmacies navigate a really complex and super challenging environment um, in the pharmacy space. When and ever changing and without a doubt. Oh, without a doubt. Like I go to bed one day with my day planned and I wake up in the news and it's completely different. So um, absolutely ever changing, fascinating landscape. And uh, um, so for EPN, Epic Pharmacy Network, Network. We have about 1,200 pharmacies, uh, independent pharmacies we represent nationwide. Uh, 134 of them happen to be in um, the in Maryland, and we are based in Maryland. And uh, four of our board members, our board members are actually pharmacy owners, independent pharmacy owners, are in Maryland. So we just have a great presence there. Are totally tied to the community and working with uh, HDA and others to really um, bring forth positive PSAO independent pharmacy um, relationships within the community and the healthcare continuum as it is. Well, Br um, Breda and Scott, I would say to you, I own an independent AM radio station. <laughs> <laughs> you think I like representation with the government, with the FCC, right? When it comes to me <laughs> fighting with Odyssey or fighting with Clear Channel, or I would see the same thing. I mean, we'll, we'll say Walmart and CVS and Walgreens. Everybody's familiar with what they are. Then there are then there are local places. Scott, I, this is where maybe I bring you into this a little bit and saying it might, must be difficult uh, running up <laughs> against the man uh, when it comes to pricing. But more than that, anytime I – deal with anything medical. I had a back issue six months ago, not just the pharmacy in front of house, but the back of house for every hospital, every uh, clinic that has to deal with insurance and saying to a customer, you can't have this drug because your insurance won't pay for it. It'll be full price or this. I, I can't imagine how difficult it is running a small place. Well, thanks for having us on and asking that question. Uh, you, you hit on a, a number of the issues about why PSAOs are so important. Uh, as, as a small pharmacy owner myself, um, I have to do everything 
uh, in the business, not just fill prescriptions and take care of patients, but I've got to do payroll. I've got to figure out how to get uh, contracts with these pharmacy benefit managers and health plans. I've got to, you know, do my books at the end of the day. And all of those things are things that take away from me take, uh, taking care of my patients. And so I use some of those back office services to help me uh, manage my businesses. I hire, I, I hire a bookkeeper to help do my books. I hire a CPA to help do my payroll. And I hire uh, it, sounds like a, it sounds like a radio station owner in uh, well, Towson, Maryland, it, it, a little bit. Exactly, right? <laughs> you find somebody who does it better than you can do it and more efficiently, and you, and you hire them to do it. And that's what a PSAO does for me in my business. I hire them. I pay them a, cu a couple hundred dollars a month flat fee to take that administrative burden of interacting and contracting with the pharmacy benefit managers and the health plans off of my plate so I can spend more time focused on taking care of people like your mom and your wife and, and providing that excellent clinical service and providing medications to them uh, at an affordable price in a timely manner so that they can get their health uh, back in shape. That's what, that's what we're supposed to do as independent pharmacy owners. And we're just very grateful to have uh, entities like PSAOs that can help take some of that administrative back office off of our shoulders. Bretta, can I join and have you do all my administrative stuff? I'd love to do that. Is that, is that good? I think that branching out into uh, radio space sounds very interesting. Well, it, you know, in, in you dealing with 1,200 different uh, organizations and, and small places and 134 here locally, what, what are the concerns? Well, you know, when, when, when you're lobbying, when you're saying, hey, we need help for these people, especially here locally because you're a local company, everybody here has heard of an epic. Everybody drives past one every day in our community for sure. What what? What are, how are the big guys beating you up and what do you need? Where do you need help? Well, first of all, one of the, can, you know, people lump pharmacies all together. Independent pharmacies deliver a service at an independent level and they don't have the resources of a large chain pharmacy that you'll see in a Walgreens or a grocer that have large corporations and teams of people to manage those business um, items that Scott was mentioning on behalf of them. And that's really necessary because there's a lot of confusion in the market too of what a PSAO organization does versus the other large organizations such as chain pharmacies and then the PBMs and the large insurers. So in order to be able to help manage all of the um, complexities and hurdles and challenges that these entities place in front of independent pharmacies. Um, that is our goal. That is what we do. That is what we come together to do, to do the compliance, the reimbursement, the claims reconciliation. And those are the greatest hurdles because they all are have these resources and large corporations and are moving forward with setting the patient's plan designs and reimbursement terms. And in order to have these independent pharmacies succeed, they need a larger voice to be able to represent them on behalf of those as they take care of the business of servicing their members. So from an independent pharmacy perspective, that would be the most challenging aspect from a PSAO trying to manage them. Just give Give them the voice and the ability to conduct the business that is so critical in communities with all of the challenges in facing them from these, you know, from other entities. So this legislation, what, how, what, how would this make Scott's life different? Scott? <laughs> well, it's, yeah. it's a good, good question. Well, so in, in 2020, uh, the Maryland General Assembly passed the bill that uh, required PSAOs to to register in the state of, of Maryland and, and that was fine from a from a uh, accountability standpoint. Unfortunately, they put a, a, a requirement on them to disclose contracts that were not their contracts. They were the contracts of the pharmacy benefit managers and that has made it operationally you know impossible to comply with the statute to uh, have the intent of the legislature be able to be fulfilled with the Maryland Insurance Department. So Delegate Kelly, Senator Kramer's uh, two individuals who helped to pass that bill in 2020 um, were very, very helpful in recognizing where some of the challenges were in implementing that statute and have been very uh, gracious to bring a technical fix to that bill uh, forward this legislative session so that their full 2020 intent can be uh, realized, but to do so in a way that puts the onus on uh, the pharmacy benefit managers to disclose their contracts that they author and the PSAOs to disclose the contracts that they author and not try to reach through 
uh, the PSAO to disclose a PBM's contract when they weren't the entity that disclosed There's it. a lot of acronyms kind of, going on here. Look, it, it, super it's, it's, super technical. Thick. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting, getting, getting <laughs> thick on that. Long story short, it's a technical fix that will allow a PSAO to continue to work on my behalf uh, and not be essentially legislated out of business by accident. And that's what uh, Delegate Kelly and Senator Kramer are trying to fix for us. And we appreciate that very much. But when you say legislate out of business, Brett, talk to me about Epic Pharmacies here locally and the kinds of places, because I, I don't want to, it was 25, I've been on the air 31 years. So this is back in the nineties where I would even read ads. We had um, arcade pharmacy, we had local pharmacies here. And when I think of them and I, and I think Epic, I actually sponsored Oriole baseball for a period of time. So you would hear, you know, the words, at, I don't hear as much of it, but, but give me, a look at the last 10 or 15 or 20 years of what's happened to local pharmacies. I don't want to say they're not there. I'm sure some are gone at this point, but I'm sure it's also not a business that a guy like me would say, oh, turn in the radio station. I want to go open my own independent pharmacy. It feels like a little bit of a, um, a family legacy thing that, but or do people still say I'm going to open an independent pharmacy and come to you? Um, uh, you know what? That's a, an interesting question because there's a lot of passionate pharmacists out there who want to continue and believe in the independent pharmacy space and are, are doing their best and trying to take it forward and take purchase chains from um, purchase small independent pharmacies from the local person to keep it going. But it is extremely challenging. Scott can attest. We lose independent pharmacies uh, every day due to the um increased regulations and requirements placed on pharmacies just for dispensing the medications, the degradation of reimbursements and competitiveness in that landscape. The, um, there's a lot of other elements that go into uh, different types of claims, uh, adjudication and uh, reimbursement challenges at point of sale and after point of sale. And it is um, not in an independent pharmacy's favor to be able to stand on their own two feet. And legislative actions is really a basis of enabling pharmacy, independent pharmacies to stay alive and service their communities as the healthcare providers that they are. So the, the challenges are mounting, but with strong voices and support um, through active legislators and, and other entities like HDA and independent pharmacy associations within the state, we are able to continue to fight the good fight on behalf of the independent pharmacies. Well, I appreciate both of you. Scott Pace is here. He's from Arkansas. He is a, a, a small independent uh, a, a pharmacy owner uh, down there. And Breda Grinsteiner is, Grinsteiner is here. Uh, I knew I messed that up before it's all over. That's German and becoming a <laughs> vice president Epic Pharmacy. Yeah, I, I don't grandstand uh, too much on this issue because I don't talk about this issue too much. Mm -hmm. But my wife uh, was battling leukemia back in 14 and 15. I talk about that a lot and saving lives. But that struggle and watching her for 155 nights in Johns Hopkins on the fifth floor going bald, uh, having chemo, having all sorts of issues and diabetic comas and all sorts of things to having the story I have is it was a patch that kept her from vomiting. Uh, it made her not nauseous at a point when things were really, really horrible and her life was at stake. And this patch was, I don't know, 200 bucks over there, 35 bucks over there or free over there. And we couldn't get the patches because they ran out and she's upstairs throwing up into a bucket for the fourth day and she weighs 80 pounds and I think she's gonna die. And I'm like, just get me a patch. I don't care what it costs, where it costs, whatever. Then the girl in the next bed whose husband was away, three kids, I don't even know if she lived or died. It's been eight years later. She needed a patch and had no insurance for the patch and no money to pay for it. And I remember taking her over a patch and say, put this on, I want you to stop throwing up. Um, I saw stuff, worse than stuff-ish, in, in the hospital during the period of time that, that we were incarcerated. Uh, and my wife's fine, she's had two bones, she's beautiful, she's a success story. But I remember her navigating, fighting with MetLife to get her insurance, fighting with all of these and she had like gold standard and she, my wife had incredible insurance, but there were still challenges. Scott, I can't imagine if you're my wife's pharmacist at that time or someone like that in Arkansas, and I'm sure you are every day, or like my 98 year old mother who needed uh, albuterol to survive. 
and was wondering how Medicare or, or I was going to pay for it or we were going to pay for it. These are this is real life stuff for, for people. And you're the front line when you've got that patch is going to make my wife stop throwing up. Yeah. And, and, and thanks for taking care of your wife in the hospital during that difficult time. I mean, I think patients really struggle with having advocates in our healthcare system. Oh, she so had an advocate in me. Charge clear, nurses clear, didn't believe me. It, clearly you know. she did. Yes. Oh, oh but, my God. But, but I'll, t I'll tell you what, that's, <laughs> that's one of the things that I love about being an independent pharmacist is that because we, we are that advocate for the patient every day at the local level. And, you know, there, there are many things that are outside of our control. For example, your health plan and pharmacy benefit manager get to discover, get to get to determine which drugs are on your formulary, for example, and they get to determine how much it costs you at the point of sale. But we get to be the person face to face with you who tries to navigate every angle we can to make sure that you get the right medicine in the right place at the right time for the right cost. And we do that because we care about the person standing in front of us. It's not just a, you're not just a number. You're not just a prescription being sent in uh, via the mail like some of these places require today. Your locally owned independent pharmacy is so important because they're the heart and soul of your community, but they're the heart and soul, the first line of health care for so many people uh, around, around Maryland and around the country. And it is a challenging environment for, uh, for us to operate. And that's why, you know, the legislature uh, making sure that it's as easy as possible for us to operate without the regulatory constraints, uh, keeping it, keeping us from being able to do that is so important. And, and, uh, you know, April 11th is a real important day that this bill has, for the PSAOs has got to, to pass the General Assembly by the 11th to, uh, to help to ease that administrative burden that uh, was created a couple of years ago so that we can keep standing there at the front lines and, and helping folks navigate the healthcare system. It's really, it's really an important thing. And I'll just say one last thing, you know, people equate access to a pharmacy as all access is equal. And it's not uh, every, every place that can dispense of medication is not necessarily the same place that you can get the same care. And that's one of the things I love about being an independent pharmacist, the investment that I personally make in my patients I promise you is dramatically different than what you can get at other pharmacies. And that's not because I'm getting paid anymore. It's not because um, any other reason that I'm invested personally in what the outcome of your health care is. I take the time. I make the time because that's what makes pharmacy a life saving and a life changing profession. And I wouldn't do it any other way. And I think that's what, you know, you've experienced with your wife and your mom over the years. And, and I, I really am grateful for you sharing that story. Yeah, well, it's a neighborhood thing, you know, I mean, and, and it's first line of defense, especially uh, we did a whole thing with the Maryland Hospital Association a couple of years ago. And three weeks later, we got a pandemic and all of a sudden that stuff moved. Everything moves to the front lines of if I get sick, where am I getting the pill? Uh, Bretta Grensteiner is here. Uh, uh, Scott Pace is here. Uh, Bretta, I want to give you a last uh, a last ball here as vice president of Epic Pharmacy, just on a local level. We're Baltimore positive and all these 134 locations here. Uh, and Scott, with that smooth syrupy Arkansas Southern drawl. Uh, but the, uh, you know, the Baltimore part. Part of this is that people do drive by these pharmacies every single day and have utilized them here locally. And I encourage them to keep on doing so. They won't be disappointed with the experience they have within their own independent community pharmacy. And my closing words is just going to echo what Scott says. I'm here. My organization is here. Other PSAOs are here with the whole goal is to um, alleviate those burdens that are put on independent pharmacies so that from an administrative perspective so that Scott and other pharmacy owners and pharmacy personnel can really deliver that service at that point of sale to those members within their community giving them that health care and personalized service that they need so just a huge thanks to you and everyone involved in Maryland who's really taken the time to understand these two bills that have gotten a lot of 
support through the Maryland legislators and uh, just a huge thanks for hearing us and understanding and pushing them through to fruition so that we can continue to deliver the services to independent pharmacies that really enable them to do what they at the end of the day are there to do and that is and help wonderful people in their community who who need it the most. Appreciate you. Appreciate both of you for coming on. Bretta Grinsteiner uh, joining us here from Epic and Scott Pace uh, from down in Arkansas. And uh, uh, to get more information uh, on on this over the next couple of weeks, Bretta, do you have a place here locally that's uh, th- that people can go and read more if they if they are interested in this? Because this is something that certainly would affect any household where anybody is. Um, is, is it needs to take care of themselves. Yeah, um, I actually don't have a plug line or. Oh, or that's fine. That's like cool. That. No, I, I didn't know if there was a no. uh, a website. It, if there's not, that's fine. It's, I will I mean, put this up and all other information perfect. up Baltimore Positive. Yeah, right? and we will have it on our website, epicrx.com, etc. Look at social media accounts. Just really appreciative of your time and Scott's support and HDA's support as we work and navigate through this. One of my best friends in the world lives in Little Rock, so I'll get down there and <laughs> hang out with you guys at some point. Appreciate you. Scott Pace, Britta Grenz-Steiner joining us here. Uh, I am getting back out on the Maryland Crab Cake Tour in our Wise Conversations. We will be uh, coming to you. We'll be in Hampstead at Greenmount Station a little later on in the month, uh, and it's all brought to you by our friends at the Maryland Lottery, and I'm giving away some Betty Boop scratch-offs. I had a $100 winner at Costas last week, uh, as well as our friends at Goodwill Industries. And if uh, uh, if you missed our conversation with uh, Lisa Rasiniak from Goodwill Industries about their jobs training program and the great stuff they've got going on make sure you check that out out on our youtube or our uh, facebook or our twitter or anywhere social media travels i'm nestor we are wnst am 1570 towson baltimore and we never stop talking baltimore positive thank you